Hello guys, let's have a look at the Ring app and you know how to navigate the app. If you're on iOS, there's two Ring apps that you can get. One is the, the main app that's called the Ring on the left hand side and there's a Rapid Ring. I'll come to the Rapid Ring in a minute. So first, if you open the Ring app, it's going to show you a screen like that. So basically the location at the top, the history, the front door, and then dis discover privacy settings and set up a device. So for this, let's just remove some of the options that we, we don't need. So basically the history just shows you anything that you've missed in the past. So for now, um, there isn't any history because I've just cleared it up. So the cameras I've got into, so this is my front door. So if I click, so when I click into the front door, I can have the option to sort of tap to go live. So if I click on that, I'll tap to go live, but you, you can scroll to the left and see uh, all the recordings I can see this person detected on all of them. That's the reason why the camera is triggered. And then you can use the calendar button at the bottom to sort of go past any other days to see why, uh, what happened at a certain time. But m what I personally do is, you know, when I just scroll all the way to the left and then look at the night time to see if anyone's been at the property and what they were up to, um, and then, you know, quickly shuffle left and right. And, you, you know, uh, it just sort of helps. Um, and then you can click the live view to view the with the view the live screen at this point in time. This is what I do. And then you press the X button to obviously close the um, the recording and come back to the dashboard. Now, press the X button and go back. So let's see what we have in here. So if we then click on this little options on the left hand side. So obviously the screen we were on is the dashboard. So these are the devices. Now you can see I've connected to two devices. One's the front door, the other one's the hallway. So hallway is a little chime. So if someone's, someone has come in to press the uh, calling bell, um, you know, not only the ring um, device will, you know, chime, the, the, the chime in the hallway would also um, make a noise through its speakers to alert me that someone's at the door. So if I click on the front door, then it gives me a couple of the options here. So, all right, so these are the ring alerts. So if I activate that, this is pretty much every single alert that's going to sort of come on top of your phone. So I'll recommend to sort of switch this off because over time, there's going to be so many people uh, that will trigger your um, your senses. So you, you, all, 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 that, all it's going to do is to sort of, you know, um, trigger your um, device notification and you probably don't want that. There's also a there's also a battery at the at the, the top right hand side to show you know how much battery that we've got in our device. So we're going to toggle this back to the ring alert. So the record motion. So this is the only thing I I am interested in. So basically, I just want to be notified if there's a motion. So the the, the software is qu quite good in in sense that it can detect people um, walking by. And so for example, if you have a a a a car going past your property, it knows it's moving at a certain speed, so it would not trigger you. But if it's a person, it can detect it's a person and it will let you know, and you know, that might be of interest to you. So the motion notification, so this is pretty much to say, you know, every time there's a motion, give me a notification. And then you can click on the notification to then go and have a look. Um, so yeah, so one's recording the motion, the other one's, you know, notifying you. So I'm just gonna tick this off because I don't want to be notified of the motion. I just want to sort of go back and see what it is. The only thing now I will be notified is if someone did actually press the buzzer to then say, you know, if they're at the door. Then you've got the event history log, which is to show you everything that's been triggered. So you can see today there's loads of um, movements and, and person identifications on that. But you can also um, filter these by Mr. Doorbells, uh, person detected, or just my live views and then you can obviously favorite any of them so to favorite them so let's say i've gone here i'm looking at my option um the videos i hit done there is an option to sort of favorite it this way there is no reason activity it did there is a way to sort of favorite this yeah okay right done so let's just hit back and go back and say, what are the mode settings? The mode settings actually um, gives you different different modes based on you know what your scenario would be. Um, in this instance, um, the way I have it is um, I've disallowed, disarmed the indoor cameras because I don't really have an indoor camera. And then the home or oasis. So if you have it, if you're home, 
you can sort of have the mode in a, a different mode the the ring app to have a different mode or if you're away um you can also set up uh, various modes to then say how the how the app is going to sort of notify you so you can click on the customized mode settings um to then say okay um um to then say look i'm on different different um, setup so you can then say if, I, if you're in away mode you can just go to the front door and say okay i'm actually away um, so i'm just going to disable these modes for now and remember every time you make a decision um, uh, it's almost instant in terms of how it sets up so let's just go back into the front door and these are motion motion snooze oh, i can't even speak today this feature is not available and motion notifications are turned off. So again, so this is just to sort of snooze your notifications for a couple of hours. Um, and turns out that, you know, because I don't really want to be notified, that option is not there. That's actually quite clever. And then we come to uh, link chimes to the front door. Um, you know, that is pretty much the speaker I was talking about, the, the doorbell that I've got in the hallway. Um, so that's how these are the options that allows you to sort of um, connect it. So you press the bottom button at the bottom to then say, do you want to connect to a new chime? But we're really not going to do that. Well, now, right. Okay, let's just go back. Devices. Right. Then you got smart notifications. So these are just to then say, only notify me if there's people. Rich notification to say, it includes snapshots. So if you do that, you can see within your app uh, app notifications to see you know, if, if, if if there have been people um, who's been at the door without actually having to open the app. Right, okay. And the next is the device health. So this is quite important to see, okay. So my power source is the battery and the battery level is currently 76%. Um, signal strength is 66. You want it as close to 200 as possible so that um it's it, 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 it the, the app connects to the device as soon as you open the app so with me having 66 it's, sometimes there is a lag right okay and then there's motion settings there's all these things that ring is releasing um that is always changing so you can set up a motion visit so if you go there it will say okay how do i set the motion for you it will ask you you see a house leading up to a hill uh, or, or you know is, is, is it quite higher than the street i'm gonna say no do you live in a busy road i'm gonna say no uh, and then how far do you want it to be monitored so if i i would recommend it to be 50 to 30 feet because if you do longer than that it's just going to trigger you all the time and then say okay continue um and there's going to ask you, your motion settings has been saved. Do you want to adjust it? So I can then say adjust. And this is where I adjust. So I can then say anyone in that radius, trigger or not. So do that, continue. And then I want to be triggered on all three corners and then say save. And this will take effect the next time, you know, I go and activate the device. So that's fine. Um, Again, you know, this gives you different options like customizable motion detection to then say, you know, how do you want to do that? I really don't want to do that. I don't think the AI is that good in a sense to sort of, um, in a sense to, you know, accurately predict if it's a person moving or is this a slow moving car. So I'll recommend that to be off. This motion frequency, leave that frequent because that's the whole point of this is security and you don't want to switch that off. Uh, then we come down to um, device settings. So these are video settings. So if you're on, if you're on a battery powered, it, it's only going to record for thirty seconds. If you're if you're on a power source, it will record for sixty seconds. So so obviously one thing to factor in is is not going to have twenty four hours uh, of constant recording. Um, uh, but you can use a live view if you want to record some something's happening in front of the house. Just go to your live view and you can record for five minutes straight. That will all be saved in. But for for the device the automated recording will always be in 30 second clips okay uh, in video settings you know you obviously want these to be in hdr for better quality and then you know live view um you want to be able to access that tap the camera preview for live view i've obviously got that switched off um so it says enable to see live view rather than recent events so this is going back to the main main screen where i have to click to view the um, live screen which is good because I don't really want to sort of trigger live view all the time. It does eat up the battery because I'm on a battery source. And then the recording length is 30 seconds. Like I said, this is the maximum recording that I can do, but obviously I can reduce that. Oh, it looks like 
I can now do 120 seconds. This is great because this is not something that I knew. So choosing a value about 30 seconds will shorten the battery life. I was like, I don't, it's fine. So I, want, I do want 120 seconds of recording. So maybe I might change that to then say if 30 seconds not enough, I might just do 90 seconds because if it's two minutes, the person would have probably walked past the house and I'm just recording um, just, you know, the empty, empty field. Um, then you got a snapshot capture. So this is just taking photos of photos of the road for every 14 minutes. I can do every hour. That's minimal impact. But I've done every 15 minutes. So the five minutes isn't uh, um, available to me because I'm on a battery source. Then you're looking at privacy settings to control what you want to do, audio streaming or recording to disable audio feature to your front door. Turn this off. I really don't want to do that. I do want to speak to it does offer the two way talk and I do want to sort of speak to people uh, to find out what their business is, why they are there. So if you turn that off, you probably won't be able to sort of speak to them. And this will, will only be a camera and probably only get half the use out of it. General settings. This is where you're going to change the name, location and all of that. And the ring partner. So this is this is something that allows you to, you know, partner with other devices in the in and around the house. Obviously, I haven't got much devices, but this is where you you, you can do the option. And obviously, there's this help, there's shared users. So if you don't want to click on to that because in case it exposes um, some of the email addresses and stuff like that. But you can share your um, app access to different people. So this is this will come useful if you have if you're setting this up for your elderly parents and someone's at the door and you know the, there shouldn't be anyone at the door and you can quickly have a look and then you know to see if, if everything is sound and well right so now let's go back to the other device which is a chime so chime doesn't actually give you a lot it just says motion snooze and you don't really um it's a snooze notification from the hallway for six hours uh you know it's snoozing for six hours i really don't know what this is i mean for me i would probably lower this because i really don't want this news i want it working all uh one sound notification for an hour i don't know why i do that i think that that option should just be gone device health obviously you know again the signal is pretty low on this one um but i'll take it is what it is audio settings this is where you're going to do the, the notifications you want to receive alert for 59 minutes okay i think it looks like it's triggering that now and then the tones these are all the different tones that we've got uh, and then in general settings, you know, again, you can rename it and it's tell us where the, where the location is. So you can move the device to another house and then change the location that way. Right now, going back a step, again, this history tab is pretty much what we've looked at in the past. And the settings, again, this exposes my address. I might have to sort of cut this out. Um, and then set up a new device. If you do have a new device, you know, uh, you click on the relevant option and say so if you do have an alarm, you, you go through there um, and then you cancel that option. Then what you do is this control center. If you come into the control center, um, it's going to obviously ask you what you want to do. These are, these are everything linked very personal to your accounts, um, like verification the devices that you authorize, the, the users, the video management and the encryption and all of that. Um, the new features. These are these are like tutorials that they'll tell you like what they've released uh, and and how you should sort of proceed. So these are all fine. Again, you see these are the options that we've enabled and I've just shown you through. So pretty much, this in a nutshell, this is how um, the the app functions. And then you've got the help section here, and you can contact them. But most most of the time, you're just going to find yourself inside the dashboard. Time to activate the device, which is why I want to come into the the rapid ring. So basically, with iOS, there is an issue where if you click on the app um, and then you want to do live view, you see here you hear someone's outside the door, and you just quickly want to sneak up and have a look, and then it's frustrating to see the the loading icons and. Um, uh, right, let's see download another app called rapid ring so what this does is that actually it sits into this app so you can see there's an option at the bottom to call open the ring app but this pretty much gives you a quick instant access to your front door it doesn't it cuts down the loading time by 75 percent that i've seen like every time so i've actually configured all of my notifications through the rapid ring app so 
the main ring app doesn't actually notify me but the rapid ring app does and then i can just quickly hit play and then it will take me to that user but because i'm screen recording it might have some issues so here's the settings and then the settings will kind of show you all my details and i need to sort of um, remove that um but yeah so this is a quick overview of the ring app um if you guys do want to see more things like this do let me know in the comment sections on which app do you want me to cover and i'm more than happy to cover that if there's something that you found that i didn't cover and you wanted me to sort of answer that do let me know but other than that take care of yourself and we'll we'll meet in the next video